This is the most difficult painting I've ever done, but boy was it worth it. Hi there, my name is Anne, and this video is a speed paint of a uh, paint by numbers that I got from Craftease. For transparency, I did get this kit for free. Uh, Craftease sent it to me so that I could review it and make a video about it, but they are not paying me to say anything. Everything that I will say in this video is my honest opinion. So this painting is a 40 by 40 centimeter painting and the artist is named David Loblau, but more on him and Crafties a little bit later. I got a framed kit which cost $64.80, but you can get the other kit which is a rolled kit and that costs $34.80. So let's start with what comes inside the kit. Because I got a pre-framed canvas, it comes in a bigger box than if you would buy it unframed. You get this huge reference sheet and I got these extra brushes with my kit, but they do cost extra. You get stickers with numbers on them for the paint pots, a paint holder tray that you have to assemble, the standard brushes that every kit gets and some wall hooks accessories. You also get these white hooks that help you hang your painting on the wall and a thank you card from Crafties. And in the pouch here are the vacuum sealed paint pots and the color guide. And also these two pots, which are brighteners or a glaze, and you can apply that after you've finished your painting. So that's all you get inside of the box, but the box is more than just a box. It's also an easel. I can't tell you how stoked I got when I found out about that. Like, you have to fold the top part of the box in half, and then you can place it behind the little pouch. And when you put your canvas between that, it will hold it up like an easel, which is so awesome. I really, really like that. And I think it's so amazing because it's way easier to paint with an easel than to, than to just have it flat on your table. So that's so, so awesome. The first thing I did was assemble the little paint pot tray and place all the stickers with the numbers on them onto the paint pots. The paint pots do have like a little lip on the side of them so they don't sit completely flush in the tray but honestly while painting I didn't really notice it so it's not really a problem. Um, but I do have to mention that because some colors have multiple paint pots for like example the darker ones have to fill in the entire background so you have to use a lot of paint so you need a lot of paint pots but they don't provide stickers for those paint pots which is kind of annoying like it's not a problem for me because I have extra like little round labels that I that I put on to them but it could have been an extra plus point if they had provided some empty um, stickers so that you can at least label those paint pots also. Before I start the painting I just want to show how the extra paint brushes look because for $15, yes they were $15 they shouldn't look like this, but I will talk about them a little bit later on. So for now, let's start the painting. And the first thing that I'm going to do is apologize for how some of the clips look, because a lot of the times I thought that I had secured my phone onto my tripod enough so that it wouldn't turn, but a lot of the clips do start to move slightly when the clip starts, so I'm so so sorry for that. And also, if you're light sensitive, so like if you can't handle flickering lights, you have to skip some of these parts because I don't know what happened, I don't know how it's caused, I'm not that good at filming, but some of the clips have that issue where they slightly move around in brightness and I'm so so sorry for that. It will stop after the paint color, but just be aware of that, I'm so so sorry. I'll firstly talk a little bit about the kit and my overall experience of it and then I'll talk a little bit about the artist and Crafties themselves later on. Crafties has a page on their website with guides on them of how you could complete their kits and like to overall help you with your experience which I think is really really great. So I followed along with that and they suggested to start with the lightest color and work your way to your darkest color and normally I don't do that especially not if I have a white color because then you just blend it in and you can't find the color anymore a lot of the times but because of the design of this canvas I followed along and I started with the lightest color because my design is basically you have these three jellyfish which are very 
recognizable and you can easily tell them apart and they have the lightest color. The only darker colors are in the background. So I started with the lightest color and ended with the background. Because if I had done it my way, I would have started with the background, which is not that interesting to look at, I think. So I followed along with them and started with the lightest color. And also normally I don't work in one color and then move on to the next color completely. I work in sections, but one reason why it was easier doing one color completely and then moving on to another color was because the canvas and the reference sheet were slightly colored so all the colors had a slight color to them so they stood out from each other so if you were looking to complete one color in onto your canvas they stood out from each other so you could easily see if you had missed one and normally when i do one color at a time I miss a lot of areas of that color, but now I think in total I missed like five or six areas, which is so, so few areas. I'm so happy with how this progress turned out. It really was easier to do it this way. So really good job crafties. And speaking of the canvas, I had no issues with it. Like all of the areas made sense, all of the outlines made sense. There were no problems with them. Yes, some uh, numbers were printed slightly off to the lines or something like that, but I always knew which color to fill in. I never had a problem. There was only like one instance where I couldn't figure out from the canvas, the reference sheet or the color guide which color I was supposed to use. But I went to the website, looked at their painting and immediately knew which color I was supposed to use. So. I'm really, really happy with how the progress went. It was amazing. And I had no problem with the canvas, which was so awesome. <laughs> now for the paints, they claim that they are opaque enough to cover them in one layer. And for most of them, that's correct. But for some of them, uh, that's not correct. Like uh, for the very vibrant ones, which are mostly the pinks and purple ones, they did need a little bit more than one layer. But to be honest, pinks and purples are very difficult to make and very difficult to mix. So I'm not really mad that I had to put multiple coats on them. It wasn't really an issue. And I just used some white paint on them, like on the numbers to cover them up. And then I painted multiple coats of that transparent paint and to build it up a little bit later at a time. And once you get enough layers on them, the colors really, really start to pop. So I'm not really mad at the opaqueness of the colors. And I just want to mention that I paint to some maybe very weird. I start off with a very, very thin first layer and then do a very thick second layer. I like to make sure that I have covered all the areas in the first layer and then go around a little bit more messy, I guess, with my second layer, but I make sure that it's very, very thick and, and that I have covered the entire area with a solid color. But if you want to paint only one layer for a color, you can totally do that. You don't have to do it the way I did it. It's totally possible to do it in one layer. And for the paint themselves, they were amazing. They were so smooth. They glided perfectly onto the canvas. Like the consistency was not too thin, not too thick, it was just right. And also, because of my exams, I couldn't work on it for two months, basically. <laughs> and the paints were still great after those two months. Like the ones I had opened before, still worked perfectly fine. I didn't have to stir them. I did stir them just to be safe, but they didn't look shifted. They worked just as they did before. So I'm really, really happy with that. And I know that two months isn't that much, but it just, it reassured me and like made me feel a little bit better that you can do it with a little break in between. But if you know that you're not going to be able to start the painting immediately after you've received them, leave the paint pots into the vacuum sealed bags and don't open that bag. Just leave it as it is. It will preserve the paints a little bit longer. And now the paintbrushes. The original four brushes that come with the paint by numbers kit are awesome. Like, 
they are probably the best paint by numbers paint brushes I have ever used. And obviously they're not the best of the best paint brushes, but for a paint by numbers kit, they are really good quality. I'm done with the painting and they still look amazing and work amazing. I'm so happy with those brushes. My problem is not with those. It's with the extra ones, the ones that you have to pay $15 for, because they are not worth it. I opened the bag and immediately one broke off. I'm not kidding. Like the top part of the brush was, was loose and it's, I, I, I pulled it out of the bag and it came completely off. A lot of the paint brushes are loose. They don't work great. Some of them were, were stained beforehand. Don't buy that extra paintbrush kit. I'm sorry crafties, they are just not great quality. If you really want to use different brushes, because you can complete the kit without the extra paintbrushes, you just need to use the original ones. If you want a different sized paintbrush, I would suggest going to your local art store or online and buy a different set from there because the chances are you will get a better quality than this one. I'm so sorry, crafties, they're, they're just really not good. <laughs> so buy them somewhere else, I don't think they're worth it. And speaking of worth it, let's talk about why the kit is so expensive. Crafties is a brand that works together with various artists to make their artwork into paint by numbers kits. So every time you buy a painting, you support the artist behind the painting, which I think is really, really awesome. For example, my painting is done by David Loblaw. I'm so sorry if I pronounce it wrong. He is born in Chicago and lives now in Canada. He is a professional graphic designer and illustrator, and he works on his personal art and is also a freelance designer. And every single painting has a little description of the artist and what they do and where they're from. And I think it's so amazing that they really try to support original artwork and the artist behind the artwork. And that's basically what Crafties is. They work together with various artists and make sure that the artist gets paid for their artwork, which I think is so awesome because a lot of paint by numbers companies don't do that. And I'm just, I'm so happy that they do it because I think it's really important. And also on their website, they don't just show the original artwork, they also show how it will look once you're finished it. So like a rendition of the canvas once it's filled in. And a lot of companies don't do that. And I'm really happy that they do because that's so important because it's not gonna look like the original one. So thumbs up crafties. But that being said, the World Kit is $34.80, which honestly, I would happily pay that if I were to buy a new kit. But the price of the framed kit is totally up to you if you think it's worth it or not. Because from my understanding, the only difference between the framed and World Kit is that the framed obviously comes framed and the box that turns into an easel. If you think that's worth $30, then obviously buy it. But for me, honestly, if I was a new customer, I would pay one painting framed and all the others rolled up. Because it is handy that your first painting is framed. And I do really think that the easel is worth it because I really, really like the easel. I'm sorry, I just, oh God, I really love that easel. <laughs> but for other paintings, I can go to my local art store and for less than 10 euros, I can buy a frames kit for my canvas. So the $30 difference isn't really worth it to me and I don't need multiple easels. <laughs> so I don't know, it's up to you if you think it's worth it or not. Um, I would certainly buy it at least once, but maybe not a second time. But again, it's up to you. And I do want to mention one more thing that I should have looked at before I decided which painting I wanted to do, but absolutely didn't, but it was really, really important. And that is the difficulty level of the painting. When you look at all the paintings that they have on their website, at the side, it has a difficulty level and you have easy, medium and difficult. My painting is difficult, which I didn't know. <laughs> and I wish I did know because Crafties asked me to do this in three weeks and I took four months. 
Granted, I did take two months off to study for my exams and then do my exams in January, but still, I am so sorry crafties that it took four months. I should have looked at the difficulty level and chose an easy one, but the difficult one was also very fun to do. And that's definitely one thing that I want to clarify. It was difficult, but enjoyable. If you have watched my first Pain by Numbers video, that one was annoying to do. It was difficult, but annoying because a lot of the areas didn't make sense and it was just a very bad design. This one, this painting, was very enjoyable to do, despite the difficultiness of it. Like, every single area made sense, like I said, it was an enjoyable painting, just a difficult one, so I had to put in a little bit more work. But I'm really, really loving how it turned out. So now with everything set, let's look at the end result. I'm so happy with how this turned out. I think it looks absolutely gorgeous and I desperately need to find a place to hang this so I can display it proudly. I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. Did I fill every single place in completely or correctly? No. Do I care? No. I think it looks good and that's what's important. The colors do slightly look different from the original painting, but honestly, I like the overall look of it, so it's not a problem for me. I also haven't applied the glaze or like the brightener, because I want to blend together the background colors a little bit, but I haven't uploaded in four months. And I just, I want to upload something kind of soon. So I'm going to do that off screen and I will update you guys on like Instagram or TikTok or something. So look out for that. But this is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed watching it because I certainly enjoyed making it. My social media will be on the screen and also in the description down below, just as the links to Crafties and Crafties, thank you again for sending this to me. It was really awesome and I really liked making it. But that's all for now. If you liked watching this video, please consider giving a like. And if you liked watching me, please consider subscribing to me. And I will hope I will see you in the next video. Bye. And I promise I won't take four months to upload again. Like the consistent, like the consistent, the consistency. If you want extra sizes, I would, I would, I would suggest, I would, Suggest, suggest, suggest.